Hi, I'm Dr. Amy Kolbis. I'm a licensed psychologist in the Department of Psychiatry, and today I'm going to talk with you about stress, anxiety, depression, and how it affects your cardiac health. You may be wondering why we should attend to behavioral health for cardiac health. What we know is that rehabilitation works. However, stress, anxiety, and depression can interfere with completing your rehab program. What we also know is that behavioral health can also have a positive effect on lifestyle change. So attending to your behavioral health can improve your ability to manage your stress, improve your sleep, and it can also help with um, your exercise and dietary changes. It can help with your exercise and dietary goals. Stress and anxiety and depression are very common after a cardiac event, but a lot of people don't know this. About 70 to 80% of patients who experience depression are anxiety. And about 20 to 25% of these patients also experience persistent or long-term anxiety or depression. That's a lot of people. And what we know is that stress, anxiety, and depression is related to poor cardiac health. It can lead to a greater severity of heart disease. It leads to a greater chance of having a cardiac event, such as a heart attack. It can lead to greater severity of a heart attack versus just having a mild heart attack. Your risk of death is two times higher if you're depressed versus if you're not depressed. Stress and anxiety and depression can also be negative and disabling, particularly if it triggers negative coping by hindering your ability to focus on self-care activities, such as talking with other people. It affects your ability to learn or act on lifestyle changes. And it might create difficulties with following through with recommendations for staying on medications, doing activity or exercise, or any dietary changes. The outcome of that is you don't end up following through with your cardiac rehab program, and it may take longer to return to work if you end up returning to work at all. So what is the difference between stress and anxiety? They're very, um, they use interchangeably often. Stress is very similar to anxiety. I like to think of stress as being a milder form of, of anxiety. Anxiety is much more intense and it tends to be disabling. What is anxiety and how do we recognize it? Well, anxiety is defined by a set of symptoms and they, these include excessive worrying, feeling restless, experiencing a lot of muscle tension or difficulties relaxing. It can lead to sleep problems, for example, sleeping too much or not sleeping enough. And when you're not sleeping, it usually makes um, all your symptoms even worse. Anxiety can lead to difficulties concentrating or memory problems or even being able to learn information. It can make you feel fearful. It can lead to avoiding or withdrawing from from your family, from your friends, or activities that you usually would do. Anxiety can also lead to sometimes panic attacks. If severe enough, it can affect your functioning or your ability to perform daily activities. How about depression? What is depression and how do you recognize it? Well, depression is also characterized by a number of symptoms, most notably depressed mood or sadness, Oftentimes, people who are depressed also feel highly anxious. They lose interest in engaging in pleasant or pleasurable activities. Um, they can experience some sleep problems, either oversleeping or not sleeping enough. There's often a change in appetite or weight. Sometimes you feel like you want to eat all the time. Other times, you have no appetite at all. It can lead to decreased energy, fatigue, or motivation to do anything. You may feel worthless or guilty and blame yourself for any negative events that happen. Depression also can lead to difficulties with concentration. It can also make you feel hopeless and helpless, that you may feel like you're hopeless to change your situation. And when it's more severe, it can lead to thoughts of self-harm. And it can also affect your functioning on a daily basis. There are treatments for depression and anxiety. Um, one of the most common treatments is obtaining education about depression, anxiety, and stress. So for example, learning that anxiety and stress is normal and it's very common. And it's also very positive and protective. So stress and anxiety can be protective and positive when it triggers positive coping. And what we mean by that is that it motivates you to take your situation seriously. 
but not so seriously that it's immobilizing or that you're mobilized by anxiety. It helps you to seek out support. For example, it motivates you to talk with your friends, your spouse, or your coworkers. It motivates you to seek care from your healthcare provider. And overall, it helps you to function better because it motivates you to do the things that we know helps you to take care of yourself. However, it's also important to know that too much stress or too much anxiety can be negative, especially if you tend to cope with stress negatively. And what we mean by that is that you might experience intense fear of having another heart attack if you've already had a heart attack, or if you were depressed at the time of that heart attack, you may fear becoming depressed again. And that fear can be really immobilizing. You might anticipate that your heart problems or your cardiac problems will last a long time or it might last forever. You might experience intense anxiety with if you've had an implanted cardiac device. And um, it may, you may feel anxious that it's not going to work as, as it's intended or that there might be problems related to it. And you may also have beliefs that your heart disease is incurable or untreatable. And so that can lead you to feel hopeless about your situation. Other treatments to successfully treat depression and anxiety include attending to stress management. What we mean by stress management is, for example, developing a positive or healthy attitude. For example, also seeing the lighter side of life or finding humor in daily events. Learning to say no or setting healthier boundaries so that you don't experience excessive stress. Learning to manage your time better, again, to avoid experiencing excessive stress. What we also know is that there's some long-term benefits of exercise and healthy eating, including better stress management. Another tool for stress management is getting plenty of sleep and rest, finding time for your hobbies and interests, and actually schedule in time for your hobbies and interests. And a lot of these stress management tools, you can be done individually and they can be done at home. You don't necessarily need to see a professional. You don't necessarily need to, to go into a professional's office to do um, a lot of these strategies. An effective treatment for depression and anxiety also includes relaxation training. A lot of times when people experience a lot of depression or anxiety or intense depression or anxiety, they experience a lot of tension, it's very difficult to relax, and so engaging in some relaxation training can be very beneficial. Specifically, you learn skills to breathe properly, to slow down your breathing when you're feeling really anxious, to learn relaxation skills to help you slow down your heart rate, and to do some imagery exercises to, again, help you to relax more. We also can treat depression and anxiety by even um, increasing your social support, learning to um, talk with your family members, your co-workers, and your friends when you're feeling really anxious. And if you notice that you're struggling to engage in social support, is sometimes talking about what seems to be getting in the way of getting social support can be really helpful. One of the most effective ways to treat anxiety and depression is through psychotherapy. Research has shown that for moderate to severe anxiety, psychotherapy can be very effective as a treatment, either individually talking one-on-one -on -one to a psychotherapist or in a group setting. With psychotherapy, you can examine some barriers to lifestyle changes, for example, what seems to be getting in the way of stress management, what seems to be getting in the way of sleeping better, or engaging in exercise or healthy eating habits. In psychotherapy, you can also examine your thinking pattern. Are there thinking patterns that are not very healthy? For example, through psychotherapy, you can learn to be more positive and view difficulties as challenges that you can actually overcome versus being overwhelmed by them. Psychotherapy can also help with finding more meaning and hope in your